In this clip, Uncle Bob speaks on why most if not all new languages fail to bring something truly new or groundbreaking to the field, and also comments on the idea of the golden programming language. Why are there so many? How many do you know? How many languages do you know? Who here knows more than three languages? More than five? More than ten? Okay, now it's starting to go down, but we got some guys in the room that know ten. More than fifteen? Do you even have that count? The guys who know more than 10 probably know more than 20, but they've just forgotten half of them. <laughs> Why so many? And, and have you noticed that there are new languages coming out? Swift, Swift, a brand new language created by Apple, right? Kotlin, Kotlin, a language created by the IntelliJ guys. Go, Go, a language created by Google. Rust, Dart, Elixir, all these new languages, they're so cool. And what are they made of? Sequence, selection, and iteration. That's all. For 30 years, we have been on the hunt for the golden language, the one language to rule them all, the language that's going to make us all sigh with relief and go, oh, thank God, at last there is a language that I can deal with. This language does not exist. But we are going to keep looking for it. We are going to keep spinning around and spinning around, inventing new languages and vending new languages, hunting for the golden language that does not exist. You think there's anything new in Elixir? No, there's nothing new in Elixir. It's just a bunch of old stuff that's been shuffled around in different ways. Think there's anything new in Kotlin? There's nothing new in Kotlin. Anything new in Dart or Rust? Or any of those languages that I just mentioned, there's nothing new in any of those languages. It's just a reshuffling of old stuff. No one has invented anything new in a language probably since Prologue. Anybody ever write Prologue? Yeah! yeah. And you're still alive, man. <laughs> there's a language that'll screw around with your brain. I don't know exactly what to do about this because in some ways the hunt for the language is healthy. It's nice to have new languages to play with. But the more I see new languages, the more I realize they're old languages. They're not new. There's no new ideas. That's really weird. Software technology went through a period of very rapid discovery. I won't even call it invention because that's not right, discovery. But that period was from about 1946 until 1970. After that, there were almost no new innovations. When, when was the first object-oriented language written? 1966. When did Dijkstra publish structured programming? 1968. When was functional programming invented? That's a really interesting question because the first computer programming language that was functional was Lisp in 1957, but functional programming was actually invented in 1936 with predicate calculus. What else has happened in our industry that's really interesting? What innovations have we had? Who? Quantum. When one of those works, you can talk to me. What new innovations have we had in the last 40 years? It's very interesting. There hasn't been a lot. If I took a programmer from 1968 and I transported that programmer in time to here and I put him in front of my laptop and I showed him IntelliJ and Java, he'd need 24 hours to recover from the shock. But then he, or in fact, most likely it would be a she from 1968, would be able to write the code because the code's not that different. I could show them Java and they'd say, oh, classes, yeah, that's that Simula stuff, right? That's OO stuff they did in Oslo. Cool, you're doing that now? Cool, okay. One potential explanation for why, despite the ever-increasing number of programming languages, we rarely see anything truly groundbreaking is that the foundations of software development are already mostly set. Back in the 60s, Poem and Jacopini showed that any software problem can be solved using just three constructs, sequence, selection, and iteration. And that's what every programming language is built on, even today. So when a new language comes out, it often feels like a rehash, because in a deep sense it is. You're just rearranging the same basic components with new syntax and tooling. In contrast, fields like physics undergo paradigm shifts like relativity or quantum mechanics because they discover new layers of reality. 
In software, we may not see the same kind of shift until something fundamental changes, like the rise of quantum computing or a new model of computation entirely. Until then, every new language will just feel like new lands and the same old logic. Not because they bring nothing new, but because the new they bring changes nothing at the foundation. They just improve on it. Thoughts? Subscribe for more.